All right guys, welcome back. My name is Steve with LRM Leasing. Today we're gonna go over some brake chambers. I wanna show you the difference between the two that I have here in front of me. And the only reason I'm gonna show you these two is because I've actually seen quite a few issues with them where they mounted the wrong one to your tractor. And hopefully today you guys will know the difference. And then also I wanna show you how to install them. First thing I wanna go right into is I'm gonna show you guys the difference. We have a 3030 long stroke here and we actually have a 3036 long stroke uh, brake chambers. And where I have seen is where they put the 3030 with uh, 36 and by looking at it you can see that from a distance it's almost about the same and especially when it's dirty uh, it kind of from optics view it may be almost the same but if you actually pay attention to it's the top the one within my right hand you'll see that it's one it's silver and this is just so you guys can see the difference that the top is a lot bigger compared to the one on my left so the one on my right is a 3036 brake chamber and the one to my left is a 3030 brake chamber. So the one all in black 3030, the one right here is a 3036. The thing is they gave it more power for the parking bike side, which is the back part. And then the front part is the service. So when you guys step on your brakes, this is the part that applies. And then the part that, that applies in the back is when you push your valve in and out and that's your parking brake side, all right? So what I want you to do is make sure you pay attention that the mechanic, whoever installs it, puts the correct one on your truck. Because if you have two different ones, DOT will get you and you'll get a ticket and it's mismatch brake foundation parts. So make sure that you guys have the right brake chambers and make sure that your mechanic, whoever's installing it, puts the right one on your truck. All right, so what I wanna get right into is, I'm gonna show you guys how to install brake chambers. So the one I have is, which is typically very common on a lot of these trucks is a 3030 long brake chamber. So what you wanna do first things first is block those tires so that the truck wouldn't move. Once you get it blocked, then you're gonna cage the brake chamber, which is, as you can see right here, this one is caged. It has a bolt, and then they're usually located on your guys' brake chamber right here. You're gonna need a uh, 15 16 or it's gonna be a three quarter wrench. Once you take that off, you're gonna put it in the hole like so, it goes in, you twist, and then you're gonna start spinning the nut all the way down and you'll see this, this part of the rod start rising up. Once you start seeing that rise up, almost to the point where you can't turn anymore, then now the brake chamber has been caged. Once you get the brake chamber caged, there's gonna be a few things depending on the slack adjuster you have. You may have one where you're gonna need this kind of tool, which not a lot of you guys may have. I have it because I'm a mechanic, but for you guys, you can find a proper wrench and then a flathead screwdriver. On top of the slack adjuster is the adjustable part. And on the side of the slack would be a paw. That has to be pulled out for you guys to move the slack adjuster, most likely uh, to come back. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna back off the slack adjuster as far as you can. And you'll see the brakes will actually be getting further away from the drum. What you wanna do is remove the pins that would be right here on your clevis. There's usually a cotter pin, remove the cotter pin, remove the pins. Once you get that removed, the next thing will be your airlines. You want for the parking and one for the service. So here, here's the thing on this. Make sure you guys don't mix these lines up because one is when you push in the line, that's when the air flows for the parking, that's gonna be the back. Now, if you guys did forget which line it is, it's very easy. You push in the one for the valve, the one that is leaking air, not stepping on the brake, but pushing the valve and starts leaking, that's gonna be the one for the back. For all the brake chambers, it's always the one for the back. And if you step on the brake and that one's leaking, and that one's gonna be the front, that's gonna be this one, closer towards me. Just in case if you guys get the lines mixed up. Once you get the lines off, then you have two bolts, all right? This is gonna be a uh, 15 16 bolt, all right? You remove those and then you slide the new one on you bolt it up once you bolt that up you put the lines back on you just go back in reverse wherever you started at the end you're gonna start at the beginning all right once you get the brake chamber uh, completely installed with the lines connected the clevis connected to the slack adjuster and then what you're going to do is you're going to start doing a brake adjustment when you do the brake adjustment you're going to tighten where the brake shoes touch the drum and then you're gonna back off a half a turn. So once you do that on that one side, I highly recommend that you do it on the other side as well, so that they're both equally the same for distance when it comes to the brake shoe. When it comes to brake adjustment, you are gonna need a uh, tape measure, and then someone's gonna have to help you to step on it. 
to make sure that you have proper travel. And then you would make your brake adjustments on both those axles. But this is here just to help you get you guys back on the road as quickly as possible so you can deliver the loads and keep making that money. So right here is where we have the brake chamber mounted towards the rear of the axle. Now, sometimes they'll, they'll be here or they'll be up towards the front axle. But I wanted to just show you for this demonstration where here we have the brake lines and then also where you would see the clevis connected to the slack adjuster. And this is where you're gonna see the two bolts mounted to a bracket. You wanna put wheel chocks first, cage the brake chamber, then start removing the air lines, disconnecting the clevis from the, the slack adjuster, and then removing the two bolts and sliding that out. This project should take you maybe 30 minutes to an hour. It save you a lot of money and you can, do, you can start learning more about your truck and get yourself back on the road. All right guys, well I hope that these uh, tips have helped. You get a better understanding on brake chambers, how to identify the difference between a 30, 30 long and a 30, 36 long stroke and trying to save you guys some money. If you guys liked what you saw today, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you have any questions or concern, please leave the comment at the bottom and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys at the next video. Have a great day.